Yes, uh, as Miriam said, my name is Sven and this is BizBoss. Um, BizBoss is our AI chatbot um, and he's trained on your company data, your private data. And the fun thing is he's always ready to answer your questions. And coincidentally enough, I also brought an angry cat. <laughs> so, and this was not on purpose, so uh, I was working on the presentation. I found this funny image about an angry cat and it's apparently the running gag of the day. Uh, um, but imagine the story of people um, at the coffee machine and they're discussing their work and often what happens, you have a lot of people with a lot of knowledge in their company about specific uh, uh, topics which are very important to the company but when you ask them to write them down it becomes really hard so people will talk all day over a cup of coffee about everything they know about the company or the IT systems or the processes or policy um, but as soon as you ask them to write it down then they really are having a hard time. It's hard to structure the content, write down all the, uh, the things they know. Um, and this is a problem we encountered at quite some companies where we're talking about. And um, uh, like a year ago, we started about uh, thinking about the large language models when they came up and what can you do about them? And we thought, hey, this may be an interesting use case. Um, and with this in our, the back of our heads, um, my son, Flores, he's, all, he's sitting here together discussing with Berko. He was doing an internship. He's also in the room here joining us today. <laughs> and we explained him this, this problem and we asked him, okay, what do you think about this problem and how would you solve this problem? So not trying to introduce any technology to him per se, just asking, okay, how would you pick this up? So he started rambling and he thought, okay, um, we should record what people are saying. So we're doing this Aigun uh, podcast, we have a podcast set up, maybe that's a way to interview people. And then, okay, I have the audio file, then I have to transcribe the audio file to text. Okay, so far so good. And then he was, okay, but then I can use ChatGPT to make a summary and to figure out what's been, been told about. Um, so we started playing around, I interviewed him, um, he knows quite a, a bit about computers, uh, and the, the, the apple does not fall from the tree in Dutch. Um, so uh, we had like this little interview of five minutes and he found some tools on the internet and started using them. Um, and then he, he went to ChatGPT and he was starting like asking questions. So this is just uh, him in one day building a flow of getting uh, doing an interview and then asking the GPT model, can you summarize what's just been told? And he was looking at it as, okay, okay, this is for 95% right, but that's not Lee and Lee with double E, and oh, this is not really the, uh, the graphical card, but okay, it's, it's nearly there. And he was also interested, okay, can it also discover the questions that have been asked? That have been asked? So hey, he started asking these questions as well, and, and the performance was quite okay, but it was not spot on. So that was very interesting for us in solving this problem. How can you uh, fix these problems? And um, in our company, so uh, we had these different elements, we have this blueprint, we have this IKEA building plan, all these parts. Now the next step is getting it all together. So it's not only about the large language model and generating, um, but you have like multiple steps. Um, and we like to think about it in, in terms of processes. So what we uh, try to do is, combine like these different AI to tools with a business process uh, to solve this specific problem. So in, in, in short summary, what did we do? Uh, somebody told a story, uh, having the, the podcast set up. Then we used different I AI tools um, uh, to get the result we were looking for. So uh, uh, audio to text and use a large language model. Uh, so we used the open, API, uh, open AI API uh, to make summarizations, uh, to categorize different subjects it could find in, in the text. Um, and also used, uh, because people are just talking, it's just informal language. So that's not per se what you want to have as an end result, right? Because the goal is wrapping the knowledge of people and making it accessible to other uh, employees within a company or whatever uh, uh, use case you, uh, you want to have. So uh, the third part, what we did is we asked the large language model to rewrite it into an informative business language. And as soon as you have that, then you have like um, uh, the people talking over the coffee machine, you get all their knowledge, they start talking for let's say half an hour and you can write like different knowledge articles. 
But the next step is, and it's, uh, uh, I think throughout today, many of these examples have already been uh, uh, also been mentioned. You need to have the human in the loop. The large language model, it's good at generating, predicting, you give it a prompt, and then it starts generating code based on the input you give it. But yeah, it, it's not factual, right? It's not really telling you uh, or writing or generating the text based on specific facts. So you need to have the human in the loop, as JP also uh, uh, told us earlier today. So what we're also doing is we're building this in our process system uh, where somebody in the company will just have this little text in front of them, read if it's complying with what they were telling at the coffee machine, uh, if it's been summarized pretty well, if the subjects were extracted uh, well, and then they can approve the text. Um, and then that's the moment you know, okay, this is at a uh, appropriate level. And then you can have somebody in the company doing a 4i uh, uh, principle and also check, it, uh, check the text again and then you can publish it. So that's basically the main uh, flow we're using uh, to get from knowledge and ideas in people's head to have it, make it available uh, to, to other people in the company. Um, and this is the first part of building your own chatbot. So you're getting like all the domain knowledge from the people in your company and, and uh, feeding them into your chatbot. Now I'm now switching to a different, uh, different business domain. And I know some people in the room know quite a lot about pensions. Uh, so do I. Um, and one of the interesting parts in pension company, but could also be another comp uh, company that needs to be compliant is that if you want to use a conversational UI or chatbot or a generative uh, a language model, you want to know which sources have been used to build this answer, right? So uh, we've been discussing throughout today that large language model can do hallucination, uh, generate text, but you're not really sure what sources have been used because it's trained on a very large set of data. You don't know how did it get to uh, this specific answer. Um, so what we've been working on, and I think we started on this in January, so it was all kind of new. Eh? We just had the OpenAI uh, stuff being published and getting all this traction about ChatGPT and, and all that stuff. So we started thinking about, okay, but what if I want to use this for my own domain, for the knowledge within my company? So eh, from the people's head, which I've just shown, but also maybe from your Confluence side or Word documents you have laying around in, in uh, file shares. Um, it's very hard to find the information. You have to know the document, and then you get this document of 100 pages, and then filtering out your, your topics is, uh, is pretty hard. So we started thinking about, okay, how can we use these large language models, but still know which sources uh, um, have been used to answer basically the question. So in this case, um, yeah, I've, it's in Dutch, um, and that's for a reason. I'll uh, explain that a little bit later. Um, I've been asking what's a, a participant in a pension fund, in a pension agreement, and then it starts to explain to me what it is. Um, but the interesting part is I've been tra uh, using um, the pension law to answer these questions. So the interesting part is that you can have like the sources that have been uh, used to answer the question are also mentioned in the answer. So you know which sources have been used. So that means that you can also backtrace the foundational information and check if the answer is correct, should you want so. So if you're, for example, in a legal department, you really want to know yeah, how did this answer came to be, which article have been used, for example, from the pension law, and then you can really backtrack um, uh, the reasoning behind the answer. And um, what I want to dive in now is how can you build such a uh, conversational uh, UI or chatbot or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we were thinking about first about, okay, maybe we should um, train the large language model additionally somehow. I mean, it was really in the early days of uh, the stuff became, becoming available and you know, we thought maybe that's, that's the way we can, uh, can do that. Uh, we found out that's pretty hard. Also, if you've been uh, seeing the dev uh, days of OpenAI, he's also stating like, okay, you need quite some data, quite some power and quite um, uh, expensive to train such a model. Um, but also, uh, reasoning about it, training is very interesting if you want to have a large language model using specific language, for example. Um, but also, it's still, you don't have fact-checking. You don't know how it came to uh, the answer it's been giving. 
Um, and it's pretty good for that reason in, in mimicking the way people are talking, uh, for example. Um, but we're like, okay, this doesn't seem like the solution we want to have. You don't know the corpus, you don't know the data you, want, you can use to train it. So we uh, started looking into factor databases. Um, yeah, it's been used in knowledge systems uh, um, yeah, for, for uh, getting like the information from uh, big uh, sets of data. Um, so we started experimenting with it, writing prompts, including some content from, a, from the factor databases. Um, and we will use the large language models to generate the answers. So that's, that's what we uh, started to figure out. And while working on it, we ran into this tool, um, uh, which we uh, also have been mentioned to, uh, before today, Longchain. Um, and that's why I want to share my experience today for those who um, aren't familiar with Longchain. It's this framework you can use uh, to build more complicated AI chains or uh, solutions. Um, and it has, um, has some features uh, uh, built in. Um, uh, it's pretty good at modeling, model input and output, so you can attach different large language models, ask questions, retrieve the output from the model. Um, it, it supports with connecting data, so connecting it to systems or uh, different file types. Um, you can build chains uh, with different, um, uh, yeah, uh, as I'm going to explain later, uh, components. Um, and you can build agents as well. So for example, uh, if you want to know more about the weather, um, and you can tell if, if somebody's asking about the weather, you have this API. I think Arjan also mentioned it today. Um, hey, you can ask it how to call the API with uh, specific uh, information. And Longchain supports all these different elements as well as memory, so it really remembers what you've been, uh, been talking about. Um, so what we've been doing is, uh, you have in the Netherlands, you have like this uh, wetten.nl site, which really uh, exposes all the laws in the Netherlands in an XML file, and we thought, okay, this may be a good starting point to experiment with domain-specific chatbots, where you will answer the question you ask based on the laws in the Netherlands. So you really have this fundamental backtracking to the, law, the articles in the law in the Netherlands. Uh, so that's where we started. Of course, this is still public data, um, but you can easily reason about it and test it uh, and backtrack it, as I said, to, uh, to loss. But it also applies to your personal data in your company. Yeah? As long as you know this is this document, this chapter, um, then you can backtrack like, okay, this answer has been, uh, uh, this document has been used to provide the answer. I'm going to explain how that works. So the first thing you need to do is you have to build like, which I call the vet loader, which is loading the law, picks out this XML file, untangles it, and finds out this text belongs to this article in the law, to this section, to this specific law. Um, and then the next interesting part comes, um, the way it works behind the scenes, you have this factor database. So if you ask a question, for example, what is a participant, you need to find out text in this big XML file, which <coughs> resemble the question. Um, and that's where embeddings come into play. And embeddings basically are factors. Um, and, and these are being used also in OpenAI to find uh, 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 all different kinds of, uh, of elements in text uh, and in big knowledge systems. And we started implementing this. So first you have to split like the whole document in, in different parts uh, to build the, the embeddings. Um, and then you send it to OpenAI which creates the embedding file, and it, you will persist that in a factor database. And I'll get back to the factor database on the next slide. And what I noticed is, uh, playing around with it, um, I started using the OpenAI factor embeddings, and the performance qu was quite poor. As soon as I asked the question, I almost got, every time got the same articles from the law, which was kind of strange. I was, uh, how is this working? How is it like it's always returning the same data to me? That's strange, because the law is, uh, is it's like an XML file, which is quite long. Um, so I started experimenting, and that's one of the key messages, with different embedding models. So I started using the hugging face default in, uh, in Langchain, which has fewer data points in the factors. And I noticed that the, the answers improved in quality, so it provided me better answers. Because somehow it was better in differentiating the different factors in the, the code, uh, in the XML file I gave to, uh, to the factor database. Um, but then the interesting part is Langchain was using, uh, it's abstracting away a lot of stuff, and under the hood it was hard coding on 
1,548. So I had to patch Langchain to make it work, which is uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, but in the end, I got everything uh, correctly in the database. Um, and then on the other side, if you want to ask the question, so generate the, uh, um, uh, generate the answer, you have to find the relevant text. So what's the participant? And what you're uh, basically doing there is you get like this question you're asking, you're sending it to the vector database, and you find like these different texts which are close to the question you're answering. So in this case, the participant. And it fetches this data. And what Langchain uh, does for you, it merges it into different prompts. And then it provides you the answer. Uh, it sends it to OpenAI with a pre-prompt, uh, um, pre and it gives you the answer. So that's basically what's happening under the hood. Um, and you can also give it to like other uh, large language models. So it's e quite easy to plug in uh, OpenAI or Falcon or Lama 2 or I've been experiment G GPT for all in, uh, in the beginning, which gave awful performance, but it's very easy to experiment with these la large language models. Uh, so what I noticed setting up like this chatbot, it's very easy to, uh, if you look at it from the outside, I can just build a chatbot and chat with my local domain, but there are many elements in play to make it really performant, like which embeddings algorithm do I use, which large language model do I use, but also the prompt. Um, and as I said earlier, um, I was focusing on a Dutch market, so people talking in Dutch. And all of a sudden, um, the whole uh, the open AI large language model was providing me stuff like in English, partly Dutch, partly English, but also it was starting to talk about Michael Jackson. And I was like, huh, why are you talking about Michael Jackson? You've been, uh, I'm providing you data with pensions. And then you have to dive into Longchain. And once you dive into Longchain, you start to notice that they've written like prompts for you. And these prompts, you can overwrite the prompts, but this is basically the prompt you are using if you're using the stuff uh, chain, which is the basic chain. Basically, uh, you get all your data, put it in, ask a question, but there are some few shot training in there. And it's about Michael Jackson. What did the president say about Michael Jackson? So I was getting like these responses. The president didn't say anything about Michael Jackson. Oh, wow, I'm talking about pensions here. How come? So I was really, oh man, this, this really sucks. So I was almost at a point like, oh, I'm going to give up. Um, but it, and, and that's, that's also the, the main point here. Um, Longchain is a very interesting, uh, um, and I'm get, getting back to that later, framework, but it also abstracts a lot of stuff away from it. But there are very good parts in it. Uh, so I've explained the, the vector database and the embeddings. But also one thing I found very interesting is they have different reasoning models to get to your answer. One is uh, the stuff document. So I get like all the data from uh, the vector database, I get the prompt, I merge them, and I get the answer. This works for a small set of data. But they have more, especially in the early days, token limits were quite small, right? And now we go into 120K, I believe, in GPT-4 Turbo. Uh, but still, I think these strategies are very relevant. So you have to think about them when you build your own conversational UI or summary tools or whatever you want to do with the large language model. Um, and you also have a uh, possibility to refine documents. Basically what happens, you ask a question, you uh, get the first result of your documents in your factor store, so let's say you get 10 of them. Uh, you ask the question, you insert document one, you get the answer, and you reinforce basically uh, this cycle by getting the answer, getting another document, asking the question again, and this way trying to make the answer stronger and better based on these ten, 10 documents, for example. You could also do summarizing with these 10 documents or whatever you want to do, build quizzes maybe with it. Don't know which part uh, you've been using there, but there are many ways to, uh, to set this up. Uh, the other one is uh, we know from big data, uh, MapReduce, so you have 10 documents, ask the 10 questions, uh, merge these into a new prompt, and then you get like one final answer which I believe are awesome strategies and very good to have like this conceptual model about how can you talk with the large language uh, uh, models. But then again, they're part of, uh, of Langchain. And um, I use, I've, been, no, I've been using uh, Langchain for a couple of months and I found a couple of things uh, about it. One is it's very good for getting started. It's very easy if you look at the code, really touched upon them uh, 
now to think about it, but there are just like 10 lines or five lines of code. It's, I mean, almost everybody with a little bit of Python knowledge is able to build such a chain in a conversational uh, UI. But it also has quite some abstractions. So Michael Jackson appearing in your answers, how the hell? Because they're abstracting away all these different components for you. So you're getting lost about what am I doing here? Oh, I'm using a factor database. I'm using embeddings. Oh, they're pre-prompting in there. They're chaining the prompts. So that's, that's pretty hard. And there's no debugging in Longchain. So it's very hard and they're working on it, but it's still very hard to find out what's been done in the whole chain to get it working. Only the, the prompts only support English at the moment. So if you really want to use Langchain in a different language, then yeah, you're on your own basically. You have to, uh, you cannot really use Langchain in my opinion. So you can only do prompt tweaking for a very simple change. Uh, uh, sorry, si yeah, simple change. Um, but yeah, you will need a bit more in a real, uh, real life use case. Um, in the end, chaining is awesome. Um, but I would be a bit more cautious in using it in bigger projects and projects that need to live a little bit longer because you really need to grasp like, okay, what am I doing? What's happening under the hood? Um, and so that's some insights I wanted to share. Um, I have a couple of minutes. I'm going to wrap it up because otherwise there won't be uh, time for questions. If you want to know a little bit more about it, um, I have some suggestions from websites to look at. Learn, learn prompting. I found this very useful, useful during my journey especially as they also have some quite some advanced topics also about uh, prompt injection and all that kind of stuff. So it's also on the defensive side of using prompts, uh, really awesome site, uh, waiting for the pictures. Uh, Deep Learning AI from Andrew Ng, I think you pronounce it like that. Uh, almost all free, awesome stuff to learn. Um, interesting project came to learn about it this week, also discussed it with the uh, EAP a little bit, Olama, uh, running your local uh, large language models, interesting to experiment with, I think, and of course, Longchain uh, as an end. Uh, so I, I'd say if you want to get up to speed, uh, look into these websites, they're very interesting, a lot to learn. Um, and on that bombshell, we have two minutes for questions. Thank you very much, Sven, for the great talk. All right, then. Uh, it's time for questions. Yes. Thank you. Very nice talk. So um, I was wondering if, um, besides um, building change, you considered fine-tuning for your specific task, or whether you tried that, and have any insights how well that works compared to chaining? No, I haven't tried fine-tuning uh, yet, so... Uh have to have to dive into that to be honest. Uh, yeah, so 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 can't can't answer on that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, sorry. All right. A few more questions. <coughs> yeah. Throw, yeah. Just throw it. Oh. Ooh. Hey. Great. Thanks for the talk. Um, throughout the day, I heard several people that when you have a question, you um, uh, convert it into a vector embedding, mm -hmm. and then try to search relevant content. I was wondering if anyone here in the audience has tried uh, first generating a preliminary answer, then embedding the answer, and then try to find content. Because sometimes um, uh, context maps better to other contexts instead of questions mapping to context. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, uh, it makes uh, okay. sense. Uh, I haven't tried it personally, but I, I like the idea. So the idea is to get the answer from the large language model and also feed that in the factor database to refine or check the answer yeah, of the model, to try right? try and find better yeah, context yeah. for generating yeah, so the final answer. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like an extension of the, the refine model here where you prefetch the documents, but you're also using like the answer of the large language model to find new documents or validate the answer using the factor database. Yeah, I'll have to look into that one myself, yeah. but thanks. Uh, we, we have time for one more question. All right, then. Ah, okay, we have one more question. If you could pass Could you pass it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I was wondering, because you said uh, Langchain is uh, made to only uh, use English, but um, mm -hmm. I guess you should be able to change the default prompts there, right? So if you change yeah. all the default prompts in Langchain, do you think then it would be fine for Dutch? Yeah, I think. Uh, um, um, so these are, this is the most simple prompt in, in Langchain. 
Um, but if you go to more complicated, uh, so, so this is what they call the, um, the stuff prompt. Um, so uh, the in the simple chain. But if you go to QA or with memory, they get complicated, more complicated. If you build like the uh, reinforcement, refinement, web reduce chains, they even get more complicated. So it is feasible, uh, but you really have to know what Longchain does with the prompts, how it gets data from the previous prompt, inserts it into the next prompt. So it is doable. Uh, my approach would be to write my own custom process uh, with my own prompts, which I really understand because Longchain is abstracting away and you're losing like grip and control of, uh, of what's happening. So um, if I would switch to a different language, I would write that part, at least that part myself, uh, extend Langchain there or maybe do it all by myself. But I would not really, yeah, temper around with the prompts of long chain. I, I tried that, but it's really hard to make it work. Okay, thanks for the advice. Oh. All right then, thank you very much, Sven. And here is your <laughs> token of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you.